This is a Swatini TV News Bulletin at 8, read to you by myself, Natalie Sitole, alongside Namakabi Songambule. First up, here's a look at our headlining stories. His Royal Highness Prince Lindani has received PPEs worth over 500,000 Emalangeni donated by the Republic of Turkey. The Minister of Home Affairs says Eswatini does all in her power to create an enabling environment for refugees. The Acting Minister of Labour and Social Security calls upon government, employers as well as employees to come together in order to improve working conditions. And now the news in detail. His Royal Highness Prince Lindani has received on behalf of the King of Satini a donation of personal protective equipment from the Republic of Turkey worth 500,000 Emalangeni. His Royal Highness thanked the government of Turkey for the kind gesture and the continued support of Eswatini's efforts in curbing the spread of COVID-19. The presentation of the PPEs took place at the government central medical stores in Matapa. As a result of the COVID-19 pandemic, which continues to ravage the globe, the government of the Republic of Turkey has donated personal protective equipment worth 500,000 Emalangeni to the government of the Kingdom of Eswatini. The PPEs will be used by health workers and MSWAT to protect themselves from the COVID-19. The donation was received on behalf of the government by Prince Lindani, who applauded the government of Turkey for donating the PPEs to Eswatini. Prince Lindani says the PPEs came at the right time when the country is in need of them as it anticipates the third wave. On behalf of the King's office, um, this is an initiative uh, which His Majesty is aware of. He has uh, dispatched me to come and uh, see for myself so I can report to him on everything. For starters, uh, His Majesty applauds the relationship and the bilateral cooperation between um, the Kingdom of Eswatini and the Republic of Turkey. This is just one of uh, many initiatives which um, our two sisterly nations uh, you know, are, are showing that you know, the, the bilateral cooperation between the two countries is growing um, more and more. There are many, many companies which are looking to come into the country and set up and create job opportunities in many sectors, um, not just only, as I said, not just only in COVID-19, but also in manufacturing, uh, energy sector, construction, and many other, and many other, um, many other industries as well. Turkish consular Ismail Olmes says this is a way of strengthening the bilateral relations between the two countries. Personal protective equipment is very critical to government's efforts in response to COVID-19 pandemic crisis, especially for the frontline healthcare workers. Minister of Health Lee Gorsi says, as new infections increase on a daily basis, the country needs to be prepared for the third wave, hence the donation of PPEs will come in handy. It was such a scramble internationally for PPE and it hasn't stopped because we've had one wave after the other, after the other of, 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 of this uh, pandemic. So it is uh, a, a, a encouraging and a great pleasure to me that uh, the people of Turkey have taken the initiative to uh, donate uh, this much PPE to protect the health workers and all the frontline workers. The personal protective equipments include hand sanitizers, face masks, gloves and many others. For Iswatin TV News, so to Adlamin with Mbonga Dube, Matsapa. The Minister of Home Affairs, Princess Lindy, says the country is doing all it can to provide refugees in the country with almost everything they need while they are in Eswatini. The Minister said this during the commemoration of World Refugee Day held at Sibaini Lodge on Friday. The commemoration of the World Refugee Day is normally held on June 28th, but the country held it on Friday. However, as the world will be commemorating the day on Sunday, the country will also host a function at Malinda Refugee Camp. The Minister of Home Affairs, Princess Lindy, pledges government support for refugees. Already the kingdom has recorded remarkable source stories of successful refugees that are making a mark in the education space, some of whom are currently studying to obtain advanced qualifications, including PhD degrees. To 
allow me to reiterate the, co the commitment of His Majesty's government to provide an enabling environment for refugees and people of concern, which includes refugees, stateless persons, and asylum seekers. To this effect, I am pleased to announce that plans to simplify the refugee status determination process will soon become a reality. Anya Yabea from the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees says it was pleasing to see that some refugees managed to come up with business ideas despite COVID-19 outbreaking. In Eswatini, we have a refugee who has enrolled, started a new school within the midst of the pandemic and enrolled their students to um, virtual learning, ensuring that education is still delivered to, to the children in Eswatini. Deputy Commissioner Refugees from the Ministry of Home Affairs, Wandile Pembe, says the country strives to ensure that refugees are included in all sectors in the country. Challenges with regards to welfare, exclusion from welfare grants, elderly because we do have those that are elderly, we do have disabled people, um, exclusion of social relief programs. We advocate for that, that they be considered. At least the country have 2,000 refugees for Eswatin TV News. Fortune Langamandla Matsapa. On behalf of His Majesty King Msat III, Her Majesty the Queen Mother, the government and the people of Eswatini, as well as on his own behalf, the acting Prime Minister Temu Masugu has expressed the country's deepest sorrow to President Edgar Lungu, the government and the people of Zambia in learning about the passing of the founding president and liberation hero Dr. Kenneth Kaunda. The acting Prime Minister says a true statesman, head and shoulder above many, led an era of persistent advocacy for Africa's independence to usher in a new African political order. Masugu says Dr. Kamunda's tremendous contribution to the liberation of the region before, during and after his service is well documented and has left an indelible mark for future reference in history recounted for Africa's prosperity. The acting PM says Eswatini is at a loss in the passing of the Sadak founding father and it is Emma Swati's hope and prayer that the almighty God will comfort the next of kin and friends of the departed statesmen, government and the people of Zambia during this dark hour of great loss. The acting Minister of Labour and Social Security, Polisha Kantu, calls upon government, employers as well as employees to come together in order to improve working conditions. Minister Shakantu said this when meeting a delegation at the Royal Science and Technology Park that is virtually attending the International Labour Organization Conference. The International Labour Organization Conference is held yearly in Geneva, Switzerland. However, this year it was held virtually. The conference is divided into two sessions. The other one started on the 30th of June and it is expected to end on Saturday. Then the other one will be held starting from November 25 to December 11th. The acting minister of labor and social security, Paulile Shakantu, encourages unity among government employers as well as employees. She says she expects that the country will take lessons from the conference, which will later be implemented not only for the sake of ILO, but for the country. <laughs> Nothing has been done again. So, if you saw Sammy and as a social Sahulu men, they would see Sikubege, Nale Spirit, say collaboration, say teamwork, Logutin as a seven dagan yagan, Sibambisana, Sati would see Saka leave. Speaking on behalf of employers, his business is what in chief executive officer, Ina Tilamin, who uploads government strategy on dealing with COVID 19, as men of Maswati did not lose jobs. Even even though our response may not be the very best, I think as a country we have done exceptionally well. And Minister, I say that with confidence, having seen for myself the evidence of many countries, by the way, which we all respect, which have uh, fumbled around like nobody's business. 
And here we are, our little Owe Swatini. Uh, we did the very best that we can with the little that we, we, we had. Nomse Bozwane from Tukosa speaks on behalf of employees. She thanks government for ensuring that workers participate in this year's conference. She says workers were able to attend so many conferences. So that was an experience Noticeable is that this year's virtual conference employers and employees have five representatives each while in previous years they had two each for Eswatin TV News Fortune Langamanda Matapa. Minister of Health Lee Zinkosi has received more than 30 food parcels from the Republic of South Korea. The food parcels will be distributed to Emaswati, who are being treated for chronic illnesses at Hospice at Home. The event was held at Hospice at Home in Matapa. The 30 food parcels donated by the Republic of South Korea will assist Amaswati who are being treated for chronic illnesses at hospital at home. Presenting the donation to the Minister of Health, Consular Han Ji Kim says the bilateral cooperation between the two countries dates back to 1968. As a result, South Korea will continue to support Amaswati who are in need in order for them to survive. Uh, he already uh, donated like this food parcel more than 3,000 families. So the hope this food, even though it's a small parcel, helping people in this kingdom to live healthy. Minister of Health Lee Sung Ho conveyed his appreciation to the government of the Republic of South Korea for supporting Amaswati who are critically ill. There's a whole team of volunteers that are here that go out to families and help look after people who, some of them were terminally ill, uh, some of them who have long-term illnesses. But we have growing cancers, we have all sorts of other ailments where people do need support of individuals, uh, you know, some people don't have families of individuals that take their time to come in and help them and comfort them. The minister further revealed that she will ensure that the food parcels benefit those who are in need. For Iswati TV News, Zotu Atlamen with Mbonga Dube, Matsapa. Government subvention to the University of Eswatini is too little to cover operational costs. The subvention covers 40% of operational costs instead of 60 to 70%. This was said by Acting Minister of Education and Training, Harris Bulunga, in Senate. The Acting Minister of Education and Training, Harris Bulunga, says most of the problems at the University of Eswatini are caused by that government subvention to the university does not cover all operation costs. He says the current subvention only covers at least 40 percent of operation costs, adding that it is for this reason that it cannot attract qualified professionals. Uh, the funding through subvention, the whole mandate, so it covers only about 40 percent of the cost or the budget. The so we the Namiaga University. You will all kinds of good say so Bama Tigaleti generally would have San Yosega Maholo and maybe a Sepizza who create a Bulkuni, a good attractive, a highly qualified staff, a Lesnander University, good say Kubege. It's a general manima university, let's not say international, a fully accredited international. The Wunyo Vela Wunjala report, Narenza Batabo accreditation, Gogoguzi, a Logabutung emotion. In the bike, attract qualified professionals, Guzi, where I can have a university in Nado, or short of demand, Guzi, at the Sassi enough, I badali am a competitive packages. Senators also debated the report tabled by the acting minister of education. Some of the senators say the university should find ways to generate income on its own. Each time university, 
ukuthi alwamithi lama needs the report which has tabled in Senate chambers by the acting minister follows that the senators move that he submits regarding UNESCO's current status with regard to general upkeep, examination, as well as ability to attract qualified professionals for Eswatin TV News Fortune Langamanda with Muslim Konda Parliament. The Ministry of Home Affairs notifies essential cross-border travellers of the temporary closure of the Mananga border post due to challenges on the RSA side. Border operations are expected to resume on Sunday, the 20th of June 2021. Essential cross-border travellers are advised to use alternative borders including Gwenya, Mahamba, Matamo and Lavumisa when travelling to South Africa. Any inconvenience caused is deeply regretted. Although the Kingdom of Eswatini has reached 95, 95, 95 and surpassed the global 90, 90, 90 goal in fighting HIV and AIDS, it is still putting in more effort to engage the last 5%. On Thursday, the Alliance of Mayors Initiative for Community Action on AIDS at the local level was stationed at the Nguenya border gate to bring HIV services closer to truck drivers. Amical Director Bongilin Lelas Melani says this is to strengthen the country's efforts to combat the virus. The Kingdom of Eswatini was at some point losing the battle against HIV and AIDS and counted among countries with the highest number of infected people. To change the situation, the Kingdom conducted a study to establish vulnerable groups in respect to the virus. The findings were that these groups include men who have sexual relations with other men, sex workers and truck drivers. To assist truck drivers as they are often on the road, the Alliance of Mayors Initiative for Community Action on AIDS at the local level went to the Nguenya border gate in a bid to bring HIV AIDS services closer to them. Amical Director Sbongilindelas Melane says this is to reach everyone in a bid to combat the virus. Amical Programs Director Lindy Wesibelane explains what services they had brought to the truck drivers. The step taken by Amical is in line with the country's ambition to end HIV AIDS by 2022. It is also in line with the 1990-90 global target which the country has already surpassed. For Swatini TV News, Tim Guzma Vimbela with Mbongwa Dube, Ngoenya. His Majesty's Correctional Services has filed an urgent application in the High Court seeking an order that will revoke another order it made which directed it not to detain Sipo Shongwe at the Matapa Central Prison but any other Correctional Services facility. The service alleges that it has gathered classified intelligence that Shongwe is working with outside forces on a daring escape. It claims the accused did this through a cell phone he had smuggled and a DSTV decoder also smuggled and used for communicating in decoded messages is well incarcerated. The urgent application filed by His Majesty's Correctional Services follows an order granted by the High Court that Siposhongwe should be detained in another facility other than Matsapa Central Prison. Shongwe had told the court that he was ill-treated at the Matsapa Prison as he was deprived food for three days following that correctional officers turned back those who had brought him food and further added that an officer pulled him by his private parts during a rub down search in the agent application HMCS Commissioner General Lamakosini Lamini has told the court that Shongwe is lying and not telling the court the whole truth. Lamini alleges that Shongwe has been found with suspected poisonous powdery substance, sash, cell phone, 39 telephone calling cards, unauthorized letters, and multi substance. 
Lamini alleges that Shongwe refuses to submit to a wrap down search and insults officers. She claims that on 15 June, 244 inmates were subjected to a wrap down search, not just Shongwe. Lamini denies allegations that Shongwe was threatened with assault. She has submitted that the court order interferes with their security responsibility and it was issued without due process as they were never heard. Samini alleges that their intelligence shows them that there are foreign individuals hired to extract Shongwe from prison. She submits that a lot of budget, which they do not have, would be needed to upgrade other facilities to be at par with Matsapa Correctional Center. Samini also claims that their intelligence has unearthed that Shongwe will cry during trial in order to gain sympathy, thus influence the court to be more accommodating to him. She alleges that while at Zitvashini Correctional Center, Shongwe breached security protocols by making various calls to people within and outside the country through a smuggled cell phone that was found in his private parts. Lamini alleges that Shongwe smuggled a DSTV decoder and communicated with the outside world in decoded messages while incarcerated. HMCS wanted the matter to be argued today, being Friday. However, the court ruled that it be argued on July 2nd. In this matter, HMCS is represented by Assistant Attorney General Mbuso Simelane of the Chambers of the Attorney General, while standing in for Shongwe is Laki Hau and Ben Simelane. The matter is before Judge Ngosnati Masego. For Iswatini TV News, Tim Gosima Vimbela, High Court. The Taiwan Embassy has visited the Kubuta constituency where they donated food hampers and mobility equipment for the disabled. The representative of the Ambassador of Taiwan, Oliver Hahn, says this officially marks the 2021 donation program. Some of the things donated by the Taiwan Embassy to the Kubuta constituency include 50 bags of rice, four wheelchairs and walking sticks to mention but a few. The representative of the Ambassador of Taiwan, Oliver Hahn, says they are happy to deliver the food to a delegated community women organization which will distribute the donations to the most needy. So today we, I have an opportunity to come to uh, Kabuta, Kabuta in Kunda, to deliver food and the wheelchair. Uh, every time we come here, we, we always have a different thing. Uh, today I bring uh, 50 bags of rice and uh, wheelchairs and some, some sticks for, for disabled people. And also uh, we prepare five, five soccer, soccer balls. For, for school kids. Uh, we try to, uh, we, uh, this is our uh, new round uh, from April. We go to different uh, in Kunda to deliver uh, food. The women's community organization, Gugu Kwebu, thanked the Taiwan Embassy for the donation. We are thankful for the food that has been donated by the Taiwan Embassy. We are going to go door to door and identify the most destitute families and distribute the food. Over 60 constituencies and chiefdoms combined have received donations from the Taiwan Embassy since the month of April 2020. Oliver Han says they have started a new run for the year of 2021. For Eswatini TV News, I'm Sifis Wagnumalo with Smova Shong at Kubuta Constituency. And now we'll have a break followed by a look at our financial markets. ShopRite's biggest savings promotion is back, and it's bigger than ever. Big Red Weekend. This weekend only get up to 50% off on selected products, like three Sunlight Laundry Soap Bars for only 30 emalangeni, Tassia Rice for just 100 emalangeni, plus get two kilos Tassia Rice free, Cross and Blackwell Mayonnaise, only 20 emalangeni, and an Essentials Mini Oven for only 700 emalangeni. Big Red Weekend. This weekend only at ShopRite. Welcome to Yes Country. We don't have any of this. Or whatever this is. There is only... Can you deliver this? Yes, we can. Can you match this exact color? Yes, we can. Can you get me the right tool to get the job done? Yes, we can. Yes, we can. Can you help me with my plumbing problem? 
Yes, we can. Because we are builders and whatever you need, yes, yes we, we can. can. At Spa, we've worked hard to get you low prices on great products every day. Like one liter spa fruit juice, buy any two for only 30 Malangeni. And beacon chocolate slabs, buy any two for just 20 Malangeni. It's low prices for you every day at Spa. Good evening once again, you are still watching Eswatini TV. Let's have a look at our sports news. Manzini Wanderers head coach Nyanga Ezizo Tlope says he is happy to see the big three teams competing against the armed forces teams who have an unfair advantage over the rest of the teams. Nyanga was speaking in a press briefing ahead of their game against Denver Sundowns to be played this weekend. Baban Solos, Baban Highlanders and Manzini Wanderers are all in the top five in the MTN Premier League standing. Above them is Royal Leopard who leads the table followed by another armed forces team, Young Puffalos. Manzini Wanderers head coach Nyanga Ezizwe Shope says he's happy with the position occupied by the two big teams in the country as the other teams, the more especially the armed force teams. <laughs> Denver Sundowns head coach Atul Lulu says they have prepared well for their game against Manzini Wanderers. We are there, we are going there to play for a win. As we prepare, as long as they love your win, as long as they didn't feel. Uh, but then I can't say now it's your winner or what, because uh, the results are that man hundred and eighty ten days in and off the field. Another game with Simba Vanessa taking on struggling Kluma peacemakers. As usual, uh, we always play for three points. Uh, in the game, uh, it's no different. We're looking for three points. We're trying to catch up with the uh, team that we do Sunday, <laughs> The games will be played at the recently opened Technical Center at Kalanga. Reporting for Iswatini TV Sports News, I am Patizum CB with Linda Zamini. Babane. That's all for now. Before we conclude, let's have a look at our headlining stories. His Royal Highness Prince Lindani has received PPEs worth over 500,000 Emalangeni donated by the Republic of Turkey. The Minister of Home Affairs says Eswatini does all in her power to create an enabling environment for refugees. The Acting Minister of Labour and Social Security calls upon government, employers as well as employees to come together in order to improve working conditions. And with that, Eswatini, we sum up our bulletin for the evening. Up next is another update from myself and the team here at Eswatini TV. Thank you for watching. Good night.